at the local land services and he'll be speaking from his experience as a landholder um, to the CNB pilot and the ACCU registration. Thank you, Jeff. Nice to see you again. Yeah, thanks, Julian. Uh, and yeah, good afternoon. Uh, thanks, Kate and the committee for um, inviting me to have a, a chat this afternoon. Um, I will say, a bit like Cassie, I'm much more comfortable out in the paddock uh, having a chat and talking out there than I am standing up here with those bright lights in my eyes. I can't hardly see anyone out there, but um, hopefully uh, you'll get a bit of information about uh, out of what I'm talking about. So um, today I've probably got my landholder hat on, um, so just ignore the badge just for the next 10 or 15 minutes. Um, as uh, Gillian said, I also work for the local land services uh, and a part-time farmer. So, let's get this to work. Um, so, um, just a quick, quick snapshot of uh, our property. Um, we're obviously in Wagga down the bottom there. I actually live in Tamora, uh, and our property is about 85 k's north of here. Uh, just south of Ardlethan, south of Newell Highway. Um, so yeah, just outside the Golden Triangle, really. Um, so that's, uh, be good if I could actually see that screen up there a bit. Oh, it's in front of me. Um, uh, so that, that's our property boundary. Um, the original farming lot that uh, my grandfather took up was so that, sort of the northern side uh, the northern side of the block over here. Um, he purchased that in 1926. Um, when my parents took over the property in the 60s, they bought another two properties, adjoining farms. Uh, and then we actually purchased more land back in the mid 80s, right before interest rates skyrocketed and um, the wool floor price um, caused a fair bit of grief across the industry. Um, so we've, we've been in that industry for a very long time. Um, and incidentally, you can follow the Minchin family in agriculture back to the 1400s in the UK if you really want to go into the history, um, which is actually quite interesting. So um, as a third generation farmer, um, I have a really deep uh, affinity with this land uh, and deep connection with it. Um, it's where I grew up and um, it's really what I'd describe as my country. So we were part of the Carbon Biodiversity Pilot, which is a federally funded program, uh, and it was assisted in the delivery by NRM bodies like the LLS uh, across regions. Um, so the Carbon Biodiversity Pilot trialled how a market arrangement for landholders could create new income streams uh, through tree planting and deliver biodiversity improvements and carbon abatement. It, um, all the CMB participants like, uh, like was just mentioned, had to register with the ACU scheme, which was formerly the Emissions Reduction Fund, and undertake a new mixed species environmental planning project using the, the, the methodology called the reforestation by environmental and mallee plantings uh, using the full care model uh, method. Uh, incidentally, be nearly 15 years ago now, I was actually involved in some of the, the original work uh, done that was done by the CSIRO in developing the full care model, uh, which was quite an interesting place to be in at that time, and it's interesting that we're now uh, using it, which is good for the investment they put in. Um, so with the full care model, once you design your project in this pilot, uh, you could actually get an output, and it would give you a, an output of what your carbon profile would be for your project, and then you could generate from that an estimated income stream over the next sort of 25 years or the life of the project. Um, so, um, and throughout the life of the project, participants will report on the progress to the Clean Energy Regulator and be issued with ACUs. Uh, as you do your reporting, uh, they run the modelling and then they will um, uh, pay you for the credits that they, you have generated um, based on that modelling process. And so then the learnings, from this project uh, have been brought into the, the Nature Repair Fund um, policy. And from what I understand, that's to kick off sometime in, in July, um, but I could be corrected on that. Um, so yeah, that's the background on it. 
the process that I went through, that we went through for this program. We had to design our project online after we'd put in our expressions of interest. A really, um, really key part of that is actually having a farm plan and understanding where these sort of projects can go on farm. Um, in our case, it was identifying low productivity land uh, that we could utilise to, to put under this scheme. Um, and um, knowing where best to put these types of projects, not on your high productivity land, and knowing um, what's the best use for your land. Is it agricultural production, carbon, biodiversity, stewardship, or are there other, other ways you could be utilising that land? Um, really strongly advise getting some advice from LLS, NRM bodies, or other trusted advisors who, who have some knowledge around national capital, and particularly our newly set up LLS team um, with some great experience and um, uh, some really sound knowledge in there to, to support people through the process. And as I mentioned there before, the, uh, the model outputs were provided uh, in the design process, and then we, um, which would give you an estimate of your income. We had to, uh, in the development, had to cost out the implementation, so what activities we had to do on farm. And so in terms of preparation, ripping, weed, pest control, fencing, labour, legals, freight, uh, planting, direct seeding, all those costs we costed out. Um, being I've had nearly 19 years experience in this NRM ag advisory space, I sort of had a fairly good handle on those types of costs. Um, but if, if a landholder themselves is not really confident about those costs, I really encourage you to actually talk to a contractor, ask what a contractor would um, quote you to, to do that job, or break it down into small pieces and ask numerous contractors, and then um, use that cost. Uh, so we had to register with the client as a client or a participant with a clean energy regulator. Um, to do that, you have to be a fit and proper person or a fit and proper person managing a registered entity. Basically, that means you have no criminal record uh, in regards to fraud or uh, laundering money or lots of other different things. There's about a three-page um, form you need to fill out for that. Once you're registered as a participant, uh, then you can actually go in and uh, register your project via the Clean Energy Regulator port portal. So this is basically our farm, our project. We have a couple of creek lines, so project area one and two are actually on creek lines. Area three is on a waterway, uh, and then the back area, area five, is um, some remnant vegetation or native country out the back that was partially cleared. Um, and then area four, we actually removed from the project uh, during submission. One minute, Gee, you're a hard taskmaster. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is pretty much what the portal, portal looks like. Um, it's almost like a project management platform where you go in and it will tell you all the transactions you've created through developing your project. Um, it has all the forms and bits and pieces you need to, to um, interact with the clean energy regulator. So uh, it's quite quite a, a really good setup in that way. Because um, Gillian's hurrying me along, I better just hurry up a bit. Um, one of the big hurdles that we had was the eligible interest holder consent form. Um, so if you have somebody who has a mortgage over your property, uh, they will need to sign off and approve of the project. Um, in our case, uh, the bank that we were using at the time, uh, well, they weren't fully equipped to be able to assess the risk. Uh, so they asked for a new a revaluation of property um, with the with the project in place, so, and that was a cost of about three three and a half thousand. But the quotes were between three and five, um, and they also had a uh, price um, a cost of legal external legal advice, which was between five and ten thousand. So um, and that was potentially passed on to us as the client. So that's something to keep in mind and ask early with your bank if they are happy to. Um, if they can assess these projects. Um, and this can also take quite a period of time to uh, get through. So uh, I'm just gonna jump down to my take homes and I'll be really quick. Um, so natural capital creates opportunities to diversify income away from ag and weather dependent um, income. Um, that resilience word, which is really dreaded in some cases now, um, but can build some resilience in your farm business. Uh, be patient and persistent. These projects can take some time to complete and get them on the ground. 
seek some advice from LLS, NRM bodies or other trusted advisors. Um, there will be lots of paperwork to complete and submit, uh, but I will say the clean energy regulator staff and the staff that we dealt with in the federal department uh, were really helpful and helped us through that process. Um, and again, yeah, engage a trusted service provider with experience to help you through the process if you're not so confident. So that's me. Thank you.